what's good guys so in today's video we are going to be talking about a very very powerful feature of flutterflow called custom components this is an awesome feature and really if you're building any kind of app using flutterflow you must be using this feature because it's going to make your life a lot easier and this is a very very simple implementation it's not a complicated feature you don't need to be a rocket scientist to use it and so i'm going to explain to you exactly what it does exactly the benefits of this feature and also how you can implement it from a to z completely and by the end of the video you're going to know exactly what to do you're going to know exactly how to implement this feature whether it's in your existing apps or in newer apps now before we get started if you're interested in learning how to build all kinds of apps without writing a line of code whether it's to sell apps to start your software business uh, internal apps external apps or maybe you're just curious uh, about how to build an app and you know make that app do something very useful whether it's for your customers clients for yourself for your friends family etc etc but you're not a technical person you're not technical you've never written a line of code in your life and you're afraid that being not technical you're not going to know how to write you know a piece of software well do not worry about that on this channel that is all we do on this channel all we talk about is writing software building software apps without writing a single line of code and so if that sounds good to you definitely smash the like button on this video subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any future videos and leave a comment letting me know what you think about this video let me think what you think about this method and whether you have any questions or concerns now having said that let's begin now you have your flutterflow app and the flutterflow app is made from widgets all a flutterflow app is it's a collection of widgets right this is kind of the central element widgets are the key widgets do a lot of amazing things and so your widgets i mean you can create an app just by building random widgets but if you realize that you are repeating something meaning that you have a bunch of widgets and you're using that combinations of widgets on different pages uh, you can create a custom component and all our custom component is is basically a collection of widgets that you're going to be reusing in different parts of your app and so here we have a diagram we have a bunch of widgets here we have a custom component which is essentially a combination of widgets that does something useful okay so what are the benefits you can reuse it in different parts of the app so you don't need to copy and paste all the widgets all the time which is kind of what a lot of people are doing and you got to stop doing that because if you need to modify something you'll have to modify it in all places whereas a custom component just needs to be modified in one place you can pass parameters okay this is very very powerful you're not just going to have a custom component that's static and what this means is that you're going to have a dynamic piece of code okay it's not going to be static you're going to be able to pass parameters and that means that the behavior of the custom component is going to vary depending on the parameters very very powerful and last but not least it keeps your app organized okay now your app is not going to be repeating various things it's going to be completely organized right now before i go inside and show you exactly how it works let me show you documentation here okay so you can just google flutterflow custom components and you're going to be on this page and it tells you that custom components allow you to create a custom widget that can be reused and stylized throughout the, your app when you make changes to the custom component it will be reflected throughout the app etc etc custom components enforce the dry don't repeat your sub principle of software development very very important principle and so you can kind of read this documentation just to get a better handle of it but i'm just going to show you exactly how to do it all right all right so here we are inside one of my apps and this is an app that i built to kind of mimic airbnb okay we have kind of this airbnb search field we have a bunch of tabs here and then we have the listings here right this is going to be like a list uh, of these things okay these, these are going to be the listings and if we scroll down we also have this kind of tab bar here okay meaning like you can choose explore wish list login which is kind of what the airbnb app is doing now these are all you know widgets here okay what we want to do here is if we are seeing a widget that's going to be repeated on different parts of the app meaning like we're going to have another page so for instance i can say this is a home page let's say i create page two 
okay and i say create new i have page two let's say i create page three okay it's going to be different pages right because you know your app is going to have multiple pages right uh we have three pages here and i you know i have this i have this page that i created but i don't want to create this widget from start and i don't want to copy and paste it okay i want it to be dynamic so for instance i see that this um tab bar this kind of footer here i want it to be on all the pages okay and you know there's lots of ways of doing it but one way is doing it by custom components okay and so what you guys want to do is the first step is that when you decide what you want to do so you can even go to this um this widget tree and for instance if i choose this row i don't want to choose this icon i want to choose the entire row i can choose a row and i can see okay we have three containers each container has a column row and icon button right which is kind of how you design uh the ui in flutterflow i want to pick the highest level element so in this case i want to pick the row okay i want to pick the row because i you know that's the highest that's the highest container once i pick the row and i decide okay i want this to be the custom component i want to go in here to the right hand side and i want to you know choose this option that says create custom component from widget i just click that and i name my component so what i'm going to call it i'm going to choose i'm going to call it footer uh footer option or just footer okay add component okay and now this is a component and we are in a different page here okay now if we go here select page or component and we pick components we're going to see our component here footer and this is the component we can also go to widget tree and as you can see now the container is the footer it's no longer the row it's the footer because that is the name of our custom component and i can rename it here if i wanted to and now i can start using it everywhere okay so one way of using it is i can go back to my pages here and so i can go to a page let's say page two here and i can go back to my components and i can go to custom components and i want to drag this footer okay that's one way of using it but we want to be a little bit more sophisticated meaning that we want to assign different variables to our custom component and that way when we implement it once we use it right because you guys got to think about this custom component as a template it's a template that could be used in various places but we want to have it templated meaning like we want to have it variables we want to have parameters parameterized in other words and so in that case what you guys got to do is you got to go back here you got to go to your custom com you got to go to this um select page or component pick components go to component here and now you're going to create your comp uh, parameters so in this component the obvious parameters are going to be the names of these uh, options here okay so we have explore wishlist and login so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here and i'm going to create three parameters okay so one parameter i'm just going to call it param1 i'm going to say type is going to be string you know then i'm going to add another parameter this is going to be param2 type is string and then last but not least the third parameter param3 string okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say confirm okay now if i open this up we have three parameters okay so these are three parameters here and the other thing i want to do is i want to go in here and i want to make sure these variables these values are not static they are gotten from parameters so once i go in here i'm still on my component i pick this text and i say set from variable and i say source param one i can also have a default value that's fine i say confirm same thing here set from variable param two confirm uh set from variable param three confirm now all of these are variables what we just did is we parameterized our component and now it's going to be dynamic it's no longer going to be static and now if you go on the page and you have your component here right if you go to this uh, widget tree you see footer and you see that diamond that's the custom component if you go there you see it has component properties meaning that now we need to pass the variables okay so and so now we need to define the variables okay so the variables we can just put you know whatever option one option two option three okay so now we have the options for this specific component instance 
This is an instance of the component. This is not the component. This is the instance on page two. And we can go to page three here and we can say, well, uh, on this on this page three, I want, you know, I want to use this component. I'm going to go to my footer. I'm going to drag and drop it. And in this case, I'm just going to use something like whatever, param one, param two, param three. We also need to do the same thing on another page. So if we go back to this page here and we got to go to the home page, same thing here, you know, it could be option one, option two, option three. And now we have the same component that's being used on different pages. So take a look at this one. We have on the home page, we have page two, page three, and we have different options. And this is awesome. Because the power of Flutterflow is the widgets. Everything is surrounding the widgets. And widgets can do amazing things. They display different elements, but they also take events. And you can, you know, put them together into a custom components. You can pass uh, variables. It's very, very powerful. This is kind of what makes Flutterflow very powerful. It's the widgets. And so now we have the home page here using that component. We have this. And then if we go to components... We have our default component that's accepting, you know, that accepts three parameters here. And we can add more parameters. We can delete parameters. We can do a lot of amazing things. We can also change how this uh, component works. There's lots and lots of things to do. And so now if we preview the app, we are going to see that it's doing exactly what we wanted to do. Check this out. And so here's the main page. As you can see, it says option one, two, three. We can take a look at all the pages and we can pick a page. This is page two, same thing. And we can go to the next page. This is param one, two, three. And so as you can see, it's showing the component properly and it's also passing the right parameters correctly. Now, remember guys, the parameters you're passing, right? So if we go back here and we go, let's, let's say page three here, and we pick this thing, we can pass those parameters from a variable. You can pass it from anywhere right it's all you know it, it takes advantage of flutter flows like very very flexible data passing uh, mechanism because you don't need to hard code it right we are hard coding the parameter but we don't need to do that we can you know set it as a global pro you know get it from a global property we can get it from local state custom function etc etc it does not need to be hard coded it's part of Flutterflow's very, very powerful data passing techniques. And so you're not limited to having static data. And so that is the way you set up and you configure custom components in Flutterflow. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know if you liked it, if you hate it, if you need any advice, suggestions, you're not clear on something. I'm open to all kinds of comments. I'm open to all kinds of ideas. So definitely let me know. Make sure you smash a like on this video. If you enjoyed it, this will help the channel to grow and be seen by more people. This way, more people will be able to get the help and we will be able to help them build a great app and to solve their issues. And last but not least, definitely subscribe to the channel. That way you do not miss any future content where we are going to help you to build any kind of app without writing a single line of code. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you real, real soon.